a stat that's almost impossible to believe. More than one third of food is wasted around the world. That number jumps to 40 percent here in the U.S. And that has governments and the private sector starting to act. From biotech companies looking to cut down on waste at the farm level to a number of apps that are trying to reverse it at the consumer level, including Too Good To Go, which currently operates in 14 U.S. cities with the goal of going anywhere food is wasted. So what are we looking at here? So coffee, Cobble Hill coffee shop. Right. Chocolate. Poppies. Henry Claire Oliverson is showing how just a few swipes and clicks can save money and a whole lot more. So that's a bakery and you'll see other things in here. So supermarkets also. Supermarkets also. So supermarkets tend to have a lot of surplus and it's everything from baguettes to an entire rotisserie chicken. Right. The app, Too Good To Go, allows grocery stores like Gourmet Garage in New York to get their perishable food surplus into consumers' hands at a steep discount. We always say put three times the value. So as a consumer, you pay $4, $5, $6, and you get $12, $15, $18 worth of the value. Too Good To Go is a six-year-old certified B Corp based in Copenhagen, currently operating in 17 countries. Oliverson runs its U.S. marketing. This is food that would be thrown in the garbage. That's exactly it. The reality is that 40% of food goes to waste in this country, and actually globally that contributes to 10% of greenhouse gas emissions. So food waste for a country, it would actually be the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases after the U.S. and China. That's because if food isn't composted in soil, it ends up in landfills, where it slowly converts to methane gas, which is 25 times worse for the planet than CO2. So we talk about this as a win, win, win. First of all, saving food is a win for the planet. Have a nice day. You're helping local businesses. They're getting a little bit of revenue they wouldn't get otherwise. And it's a win for you. You get great food for a third of the price. And one of the things people that use the app love the most is it's a surprise what you're getting. You don't know. Exactly. Oh my God. Did you see this? I don't think you understand. Look at how many bagels I got. And seeing other people come back with their hauls. You can watch them on TikTok, on Instagram. Right, right. There's kind of communities around it now just sharing what is in that bag. Another muffin, a chocolate chip cookie that I just broke, this little pastry, and two sandwiches. Poppies in Brooklyn's Cobble Hill neighborhood has been working with Too Good To Go for nearly two years. Jamie Erickson says it's a perfect match for her cafe. It's really hard to think this food that you spent so much time and effort building and creating would sit on the counter and be thrown away at the end of the day. It hurts our labor costs, it hurts our food costs. And so what we would do is scale back on the amount of food we would make to try to not have that happen. And Maybe then it's a balancing an act yeah. of, yeah. So this kind of answered that for us. On the day we visited, Poppy's bags included assorted baked goods and a fried chicken sandwich. And how do you like these apples? All for six bucks. Here you are. Thank you so much. But before food even reaches the cafe, there's significant waste at the farm level. I studied at UPenn, and in Pennsylvania, they grow apples. So <laughs> a good place to start, yeah. right? <laughs> Catherine Sizoff has found a way to save millions of apples from spoiling. I was applying to grad school to go and study neuroscience. Okay. And then I read that 40% of all food is wasted before it's consumed, which is the craziest thing I've ever heard of yeah. in my life. And that was followed by a wave of guilt. And then an idea. If you've heard that one bad apple spoils the bunch, it's right. absolutely true. And this is because as the fruit is ripening, it's telling all the other fruit around it that it's doing that. And so they all ripen together and they normalize to whoever is the most ripe. Based on that concept, she started a company while still at Penn called Strella Biotech. We met during the harvest season at one of her first clients, the Rice Fruit Company, where apples from theirs and neighboring orchards are washed, sorted, and packaged. But to have apples for sale in stores year-round, millions need to be put in storage without perishing. It's like, how long do you store apples in this facility? Well, it depends, but... Uh, Leighton Rice is the quality store, manager. Uh, for at least, say, nine or ten months, and we do that every year. 
The apples are kept in deoxygenated rooms between 33 and 37 degrees. How'd you know when it was like, we should pull these out and get these off to market now? Well, it's a, it's a tricky decision. Sizoff helped remove some of the mystery. So we typically put two sensors inside every single room, so they look like this. She developed sensors that monitor emissions of the gas ethylene that indicate ripening. Rice agreed to test the technology in its early stages, though he wasn't exactly hopeful. And I said, well, you know, this is new technology and, you know, they're grad students, but they're not Apple people, so, you know, I'm, I'll humor them, but I'm not opening those rooms. Well, sure enough, yeah, we opened the rooms and there was problems. Yeah, so what we're looking at is uh, maturity data. Jay Jordan is co-founder of Strela Biotech. Room 60, it's really stable, whereas room 92 really takes off in spikes. It's producing a lot of gas, and so Leighton would call us and say, which scale room do I open? And we'd say, room 92 is taken off. It's moving much, much faster. So I would pack and sell that fruit first. Strela Biotech estimates their technology saves up to 20% of a farm's yield. They're currently working with 70% of Apple producers. At their research and development lab in Philadelphia, the company is working on sensors that can be used for other fruit. Everything from avocados to nectarines to bananas. And they're working with grocery stores too to ensure that quality fruit makes its way onto the shelves. So this feels like you've hit this food waste at the supply chain level at every level. I think that's how you make an impact because when we think about food waste, we're like, well, why doesn't the grower try? Why doesn't the retailer try? They are trying, but there's only so much you can do as an individual player within the whole system. As soon as you give away your apples to the next person, you don't know what's going to happen. And so you kind of need a guardian of the apples, if you will, that's making sure that at every point along the supply chain, the right decision is being made. You are the apple guardian right now. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of many. One of many. <laughs> So if you're wondering what you can do, people say one of the best things, compost. And that there's a law now in California where people have to do this now at the local level, and they're helping them think of it like recycling. They're offering that service where they're able to do it. Grocery stores now in California being required to actually donate food that has not been used yet. So this is a way where we are finding ways to not waste, but reuse food to help the environment, help people keep down costs. Yeah, I'm just curious. I use the garbage disposal a lot. Is that considered bad or should you compost? Compost when you can. Compost when you can. And as far as too good to go, it's obviously in big cities right now. And uh, Claire Oliverson told me that they're hoping to make this more rural, but there are some challenges. But to that. Michelle's point, you know, even though 40 per, four, this number is stunning. Yeah. 40% of food is wasted. Nobody wants to waste the food. Right. No, right. no. You just have to figure out ways. And I think not. in California, by making it um, accessible, by making composting accessible, Accessible for mm -hmm. people, that does change things. That's something you have to do.